In my last video, I read from a speech by Chuck Hamill in 1987, uh, and it was kind of about uh, how cryptography can um, help defend our freedom to exchange information. And I thought it was a very interesting uh, speech. And one of the cool things is that part of it was actually the math behind the uh, encryption uh, algorithm uh, called RSA. And uh, one of the really cool things about the math is that it's totally simple. You know, anybody who's had an eighth grade math education can, uh, can figure it out. So naturally, I wanted to try it out and see if it if it works and if I could get it to, to work on, on my computer and, and all that. So what I've done is I've created a couple of Python scripts to try it out. And that's what I want to share with you today. Uh, to start off with, um, I want to review the math that was printed in the, uh, in the transcription just so that you can uh, remember what I'm talking about. And then I'll show you uh, the scripts that I've got in action, and then finally I'll go through the code and actually explain how uh, I've implemented it in Python. Uh, and it's been pretty fun. It's like it, it's you know not a ton of work or anything, so it's been cool to see that this stuff actually works. Um, even though the way that I've done it seems to be very slow, or maybe it's just naturally slow. Well, anyways, here's the math. Uh, you start off with uh, two primes, P and Q. Uh, the larger that they are, the better because uh, the product PQ is actually what limits the size of the message that you can encrypt. The trade-off, though, is that the larger the primes are, the longer it takes to perform the math. So you gotta you gotta pick. Um, so you take those, and then you find two uh, factors to this uh, equation over here: p minus one times q minus one plus one. So you have your x and y. Uh, x will be used for the public key, and y for the private key. And then the last step, once you have all that, you can take your message, which uh, needs to be in the form of, you know, a number. So if you want it to be, if you want your message to be represent text, then you need to substitute uh, numbers for your letters. And ASCII is one way to do that, or you can come up with your own substitution for it. Um, so then to encrypt a message, you take your message, which is now a number, you raise it to the power x, which is your public key, and then you use uh, the modulo operator. Uh, so you take message, raised to the x, modulo pq. And uh, modulo is the only tricky bit here. Uh, modulo is actually not tricky, it's just probably a word that some of you have never heard before, and it's really... Uh, take the remainder. So, um, so when you divide like thirteen by three, three can get up to twelve. So there's going to be a remainder of one, right? So thirteen modulo three gives you one. So that's all that this is. It's the remainder, um, and. Uh, so to encrypt, you take the message to the power of x, and to decrypt, you take the message to the power of y. And that's all there is to it for the math. Now, now that you've seen that and you know what the the letters are that I'm talking about, <clears throat> the variables, uh, I can show you the scripts that I wrote to to do these things. All right. So on the screen here is uh, a command prompt. That is, I'm, I'm currently working in uh, 
in the directory with my two scripts. So if I type dir, then I can show you I've got rsa encryption.py and rsa keygen.py. So let me just show you how these work really quick. Um, keygen is what gives you the your x, your y, and your pq. And so those are all the three values that you need in order to encrypt and decrypt uh, messages. So first of all, we run RSA keygen and we give it two values, pq. Um, so these have to be primes and the larger, the better because you can encrypt more, but the larger, the worse, because then uh, it takes way longer to, to run. So I'm going to try, try these two primes, 5077 and 907. So those are my PQ. And then you can also give it an X, which, so X is the public key. Um, and if you don't type in anything, if you don't give it the X flag and uh, give it something, it'll just start at 1. Um, and then it'll go up one at a time and as it tries to figure out the factor for to give you your x, y. Uh, so if you don't want it to start at 1, but you want it to start somewhere higher, like you can give it 50. And then that means that x will be 50 or greater. Uh, it'll make more sense in the code. So just give it 50 and then it spits out these three numbers here and that's everything that we need in order to encrypt and decrypt messages. X, the public key, is what I can give out to anybody. I can publish it uh, on the internet and then anybody can send me messages that only I can decrypt because I'm the only one who knows what the value Y is. Cool, so now now that we have these values, we got to encrypt a, a message. That's the, that's the fun, right? So we're going to do that. So that's RSA encryption. You give it your PQ. So for us, that's 4604839. You give it your message. So we'll give it leet. And then uh, we give it the key. In this case, it's going to be X. We'll give it 289. And then it spits out here what the encrypted message is. So now we do that again. This time, the message is going to be that number, 451761. And the key, instead of being X, it's going to be Y. So that's. 15913. You'll notice that this key is way bigger and the message is way bigger, so this is going to take a lot longer. Which is actually uh, one of the things that you want to do is you want to provide a small public key X as small as possible because uh, that allows people to encrypt messages much faster. Um, and then so the, the time hit is on your end. Oh, well that didn't take very long at all. So look at that. We got our, our message back. So let's try let's try that again with a different message because maybe that was an accident. So we go up twice to to do this. So okay, instead of that we'll do uh, we'll do four, five, six, seven. Okay. And Four five six seven <clears throat> is our message, and it gets encrypted into that number. So we'll put that in. Four six seven nine three one eight. There you go. So, so this seems to work. Now I'll open up the code, and we can check that out. Okay, here we are in the key generator uh, Python script. So starting at the top. We have a couple of imports. Um, Math is so that we can use a square root, and then 
sys is for system, uh, so you can get in the command line arguments. Um, we have one function, which is is prime. It checks to make sure that your whatever number you give it is prime, returns true or false. Uh, I assume that this function works, but I don't understand how it works, so I don't know for sure. <laughs> um, I just got it off the internet. So down here, like a big chunk of this first stuff is all reading in the different command line arguments and uh, making sure that they are proper and uh, or setting defaults if you don't give it. And so in Python, when you uh, run a script, it takes everything after the word Python and it, it imports it as a list called sys.argv, so it's like this. So in your command line, uh, what you do is you type Python, then RSA keygen.py, and then you give it your PQ, then two numbers. Whoops, I wrote P1. You give it your PQ, you write two numbers, you give it your X, and you type uh, one number. And then when you enter into the script, that gives you this list, sys.argv, which looks like this. It always starts with the name of the script. So that's your uh, index zero. And then it gives you all of the other arguments one at a time. So um, so if you give a flag and then you give a number, you need to, in order to get that number, you have to increase the index by one to grab the very next thing after it. So why is this thing yelling at us? Or wants two blank lines. Okay, whatever. PyCharm is great and it uh, has all of your PEP standards, but sometimes you don't really care about PEP. But I hate to see a squiggly line, so I I succumb. <laughs> Anyways, so here we go. So first of all, we look for PQ. Whoops, I wrote pi up here. First we look for PQ, and if it's there, which it doesn't have to be, because we will default to these two values. Um, then it, like I was saying, it gives it grabs the index of that. So this just gives you the index of where it finds PQ. And then it gives you plus one, so that would give us two in this example, plus one again, and that would give us three. And then we check, so that P is two, Q is three, and then we check uh, to make sure that P and Q are prime because that's, you know, the whole point. Uh, and so if they're not, then we raise an error. And then we do the same thing for x. So again, you don't have to supply x because it'll just default to 1. Um, but if it's there, then we grab it uh, after the index passed that x argument. And for all these, we got to make sure that we cast them as ints because when they come in, they come in as a string. So we got to cast them to an int. Um, and then finally, we want to make sure that x is less than uh, p cubed divided by 2. I don't remember why that is. Because really, it should be x should be. Wait, I'm saying if, yeah, if x is greater than, then we throw an error. But it should really be, if it's greater than that, we should throw an error. Because, you know what, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to get rid of that. Yeah, yep, I'll just get rid of that. Um, 
<laughs> Anyways, so now we start with the first part of the math. Now I'm calling this eq, um, which is this function where we try to find our x and y. So we first calculate that value, and then we say y is 1 just as the default value. And uh, here I've casted it to an int because I thought that was getting issues before with the two different types of, uh, like, instead of it being an int, maybe it was a long, and that was throwing me off because I was getting errors. But really, that's not the case, so I can just revert that back. Um, and then we have our xy, which is x times y. Uh, and then we just loop through until we find the factors that make our public and private key. So here, while xy is not equal to eq, because it needs to be, um, then we just add 1 to x, and we try to find y by, by dividing eq by x, because they're when, they, when they're multiplied together, they need to equal eq, so in order to find y from x, we take eq divided by x, <clears throat> and that gives us y. And so we just keep doing that. We just keep adding 1 until we find that factor. And uh, ideally, most of this stuff is random. Um, but yeah, here it's not. And then we just spit it out. So that's all that there is to it. We find the factor x, y, and then once we have x, y, and p, q, then that's those are all the three data points that we need. Cool. So now we'll go over to what the encryption side of things is. So here on the encryption side of things, uh, We start off with importing the system so you can send command line arguments. Um, and I've got this one function to just easily grab the, the argument. No one bore you with all this stuff uh, here. We'll just go down to the math. So all of that stuff above this line is to grab the numbers from the command line arguments. And then this converts, this this block here also grabs those things and it converts it into integers. And then this is all of the encryption slash decryption, these two lines. So you make an exponent where you take your message and you raise it to the power of x I'm calling it x here, but it's actually the key. So let me let me actually change that. There. So you take your message, you raise it to the power of your key, and then you take that value and you use the modulo operator. So you do uh, mod pq, and then that gives you your encrypted message and then you spit that out and that's all there is to it and then uh, when you give it instead of x you give it y then that just reverses it and it decrypts it so it's pretty simple um yeah let me know what questions you have um i'm gonna throw this code up on github so if you want to mess around with it and try it out uh, try it with a large number, a couple of numbers, and see how long it takes. Um, definitely do that. Uh, I'm sure that there's faster ways of doing this stuff. Like, there's got to be, you know, some fancy algorithms to take some shortcuts in the time because it, it gets really, it takes a really long time as soon as you... Um, bump up those p's and q's too much uh yeah hope hopefully you enjoyed catch you later